Ah, yes, this dusty day was amazingly five months ago this week. Today, Texas A&M gave the first big update on the final redevelopment of Kyle Field, the centerpiece being the construction of a new west side, because we lack one now. The $485 million project is on time and even ahead in some aspects, according to A&M System Chancellor John Sharp, who led a press conference this afternoon that we streamed live at KBTX.com as 12th Man's official media partner. Here's a portion of it with some updates on the construction. We're also going to hear from representatives, though, with IBM Corning on how you can use your cell phone during games and from Levy Restaurants on the food services, because football, of course, would not be complete without mobile devices and snacks, right? The completed milestones of West Side implosion, of course, was December 21st. The foundations and pier drilling started on December 26th. Implosion deb debris removal was complete by January 30th, about two weeks ahead of schedule. Uh, structural steel insta installation complete February 3rd. Architectural precast starts March 16th. West Side canopy structural steel starts April 22nd. Uh, pending milestones uh, all the way to the end are these. Uh, energized permanent power, uh, May 15th. All the juice is turned on then. Uh, air conditioned, totally June 15th. Playing field installation start will be July 1st. Uh, west side canopy complete, July 15th. Vertical circulation complex, August 15th. In case you want to know what vertical circulation is, that'd be escalators and elevators, okay? I don't know why I didn't say elevators and escalators <laughs> finished August 15th. And then uh, game day grand opening of Kyle Field will be September the 12th. We had all the debris and the rubble moved away and uh, started the, the, uh, the steel erection by uh, February 1 and uh, 30 days and actually we were a little bit ahead of that with some of the foundations and we got ourselves out in front with those foundations which was key to, to our erection out there. Uh, as you can tell, uh, we are up to the, uh, the upper concourse now with the steel, structural steel erection over there. Decks are coming up underneath them. Uh, we're kind of working our way from south to north uh, with the structure. Uh, over the next few uh, weeks and months, you'll begin to see the cluster columns. That's uh, what you see kind of here behind us and right here in front of you. That's, that's part of the cluster column structure. Uh, you'll start seeing something like that over on the other side over there. Uh, three of them, I believe, are already fabricated and set it on the ground and uh, they'll begin erecting the first one this next week and have it flying in the air so you'll start seeing the top out of the uh, structure as we move forward. Um, the upper deck seating structure will fall in right in behind that once again working from the south to the north precast seating risers will go in place and uh, by, uh, by uh, let's just say the end of May uh, the entire seating structure over on the west uh, over on that side will be completely in place so you'll see the, 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 uh, the bones of the stadium if you will from what you'll always see from the outside you'll be able to see that. Uh, as we uh, have begun moving south to north, we have already started finishes down on the south end on the lower, lower side. Actually, the first two levels, uh, we already have block going in, CMU block. We have drywall partitions going in, some, some early tape and bedding and painting. What we will be able to do uh, come next year is support 100,000 concurrent Wi-Fi connected users, which will take a huge load of texting and data off of that uh, cellular network that's going to happen, which allows you to have the phone calls and texting go out. We have fiber out to the edge. There's a couple of benefits with our system that will uh, enhance the fan experience. One is, is that the uh, cell phones, I don't know if you notice when you're in the stadium and you're in other venues, uh, your battery life decreases. The reason why your battery life decreases is because it's working really hard to communicate with that antenna that's a long ways away. The system that you guys have installed here has a, a lot more antennas in here. Maybe you actually have 1,090 antennas within this stadium, or will when we're done which means your cell phone is much closer, making the battery life while you're here much greater. So if you show up with a full battery, it's going to last the whole game right? because you're going to have less uh, power usage to do that communication. You're also going to get 1.5 to, uh, to 2 megs of steady throughput up and down on the Wi-Fi system. That's 100,000 current users that could get on and have an egress route virtually out of the stadium that's going to be there. One of the things that we're striving for with this menu today is, uh, and in the future, is to be able to use locally sourced products, so a lot of Texas-grown uh, items. So today we're looking at our, uh, our fruit jars over here are made with Texas melons. Uh, we, we tried to make sure that we got all of that product specifically from Texas, so it's all locally sourced. We're also partnering with 44 Farms, which is right up the road. So we're using brisket today from 44 Farms. 
We're also going to be using some tenderloin, hopefully, in the future. Uh, the short ribs are also from 44 Farms. That's something that we're trying to source local. And we're also doing some stuff with some local artisan breads and cheeses. So we we'll get cheesemongers from uh, South Texas and North Texas, and we're going to be bringing it in here. So we're going to have some stuff like that, too. Um, we're really excited about the new additions over here with the new kitchens that we're going to have. Great staffing, great people, a lot of fun.